only two-thirds of Ramadan is remaining. Days and nights have passed of this month without you noticing. And this is just a sample, Ramadan is just a sample of what life cycle is all about. It starts and before you notice it, it ends and at the moment of departure, you feel great regret and sorrow. Now, this is the nature of life. It's fast. It ends very quickly. What adds to this, what makes it worse, is that people are heedless because heedlessness consumes the time. It eats up the day and the night. Therefore, Ramadan comes as a training session for us to utilize the period of our life compressed in one month, the month of Ramadan. So we need to work hard, we need to strive to properly use every second of Ramadan in order that we perhaps attain that great award. Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسِ He who is removed, removed from the fire of hell and it is admitted into Jannah, has indeed succeeded. So this award takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of work, takes seriousness with regards to religion. There is no doubt that the best thing one can do in order to be properly utilizing his time or her time is to spend it reciting the words of the Creator Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Al-Qur'an al kareem There are a lot of benefits in reciting the Qur'an, in the Qur'an itself. The Qur'an, number one, there is nothing that is good which mankind need to know except that Allah instilled it in the Qur'an. Number two, Qur'an is the way to guidance. Number three, Qur'an is a means of the reformation of Muslim individuals and the community at large. There are many virtues for reciting and memorizing the Qur'an. And Ramadan is called the month of the Qur'an. So let's just touch upon some of these virtues. Perhaps that will motivate us to recite and then later mo uh, memorize the Qur'an. We always strive hard to be connected to Allah, to stay connected. Will you become connected to Allah Azza wa Jal by means of the Qur'an? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Al-Tabarani and classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, Allah, this Qur'an, this Qur'an is in the hands of Allah, in the hand of Allah at one end and in your hand at the other end. Glad tidings to you. What a great news. To be holding on to something, the other end of it 
is connecting you to Allah Azza wa Jal. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so adhere to it. For if you adhere to it, you will never be misled or go astray after that. You need to know that Allah Azza wa Jal will not bless one to be connected to him except that he is pleased with him. So it's a good sign. It's a good sign that you recite the Quran. It's a sign that Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with you and therefore he has enabled you to recite the Quran. following the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Reciting the Qur'an coincide with the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Coincide with the tradition of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Coincide with the practice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, Ibn Abbas said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to review the Qur'an every year with Jibreel during Ramadan. Jibreel will come down and he will review the Quran with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The description of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as narrated by Aisha radiyallahu anha was kana Qur'anan yamshi ala He was a walking Quran. What is a walking Quran? Means he used to apply Quran put it in his life, act upon it. That's how you become a walking Qur'an. <coughs> Reciting the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal made recite, the recitation of the Qur'an a sign of one believing in the Qur'an. Allah Azza wa Jal says, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْنُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ those to whom we gave the book recite it with its true recital. Those are the ones who believe in it. So Allah Azza wa made reciting the Quran an indication, a sign of one's faith and belief in the Quran. You want to love Allah? You want to love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then recite the Qur'an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that this will lead to that. In the book of Imam al-Bayhaqi and classified as sound by al-Albani, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever would like that his, the love of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enter into his heart, then let him recite this book. Let him recite the Qur'an. مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يُحِبَّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Whoever would like that, the love of Allah and His Messenger, enter his heart, then let him recite the Qur'an. We all like to be respected. People by nature like people to respect them and honor them. Well, being of the people of the Qur'an, those who frequently recite it and memorize it and so on, gives you a special rank in this life. The Prophet ﷺ coupled it with the glorification of Allah Azza wa Jal. In the book of Imam al-Bayhaqi and classified as sound by al-Albani, the Prophet ﷺ said, a sign of glorifying Allah is to honor and respect the one who memorizes the Qur'an. Look at this rank. Look at the rank that memorizer of the Qur'an obtained by virtue of his memorization of the Qur'an. Respect for him is a sign for the glorification of Allah in the heart of those who respect him. 
But there are two conditions set by the Prophet ﷺ regarding the memorizer himself. He said, with the condition that he is not negligent, he does not neglect the Qur'an, and he's not extravagant about it. He doesn't use it for to show off. Now, notice here that these two conditions are pertaining to the person who memorizes the Qur'an. We don't know that. No one knows if someone is doing something to show off. It's something in the heart. Allah only knows. And we don't know that he's negligent about the Qur'an or not because... We only see him when he recites the Qur'an. He can be neglecting it other times when people don't see him. So the fact remains, the fact remains that respecting and honoring a person who memorizes the Qur'an is a sign that reflects one's glorification to his Lord. And indeed, this is a very lofty rank a person obtains. Now, in the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ added to that about the rank of the person. He said, by virtue of this Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal raises the rank of some people and humiliates others. He raises the rank of those who recite it, memorize it, act upon it, learn it, teach it, and so on. By virtue of that, He, Allah Azza wa Jal, He raises the ranks in this life by making them respected amongst people, and He raises the rank in the hereafter. Contrary to that, those who are negligent become humiliated as a result, as a punishment of their negligence. People in this life do everything or try to do as much as they possibly can to save themselves. They're after salvation in the hereafter. Well, Allah Azza wa Jal gave you something that will intercede for you in the hereafter. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, اقرأ القرآن Recite the Qur'an. For it will come as an intercessor on the day of judgment for you. It will intercede for you. As-siyamu wal qiyamu, fasting and reciting the Qur'an or the Qur'an, meaning reciting a memorization and so on, will come as intercessors on the day of judgment and they will plead to Allah Azza wa Jal to permit them to intercede and they will be granted permission. They will be allowed to intercede. Allah Azza wa Jal on the day of judgment, on the day of account, when one is in need of everything for salvation, Allah will grant that person, the person of the Quran, two things dignity and the pleasure of Allah. Prophet ﷺ said, and this is narrated by the uh, reported by a Tirmidhi classified as sound by Al Albani. He said, on the day of judgment, the person who memorizes the Quran, and this is the predominant opinion, is that it is the person who memorizes and not just recites the Quran. The person who memorizes the Quran will be brought. And the Qur'an, listen to the following dialogue, if you may. The Qur'an will start talking on your behalf. The Qur'an will say, Ya Rabbi Halli, O oh Allah, adorn him. 
سو فيكسى تاج الكرامة He will be dressed meaning given a crown or the crown of dignity will be placed on his head. The Quran will further say, Ya Rabbi Zidhu. O oh Allah, increase him. Give him more. فَيُكْسَى حُلَّةَ الْكَرَامَةَ So he will be addressed with the garment of dignity. Dignity upon dignity. Subhanallah. Then the Quran would say, Allahumma, Allahumma arba'anu. O oh Allah, be pleased with him. So Allah will be pleased with him. This is so overwhelming, subhanAllah. This hadith is just so overwhelming. It just touches the heart, subhanAllah. Can you imagine how simple it is, how easy it is to obtain this dignity and the pleasure of Allah Azza wa And when Allah is pleased with someone, that one person will not suffer after that. He will not be punished. إِذَا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ عَبْدٍ لَمْ يُعَذِّبْهِ We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to be pleased with us all. Allahumma ameen. Also in the book of Al-Mam al-Tirmidhi, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us a very motivating, encouraging news about reciting the Qur'an, which is the multiplication of reward. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, whoever recites one letter of the Qur'an will get a reward, and that reward will be multiplied tenfold. And in another narration that speaks about the multiplication of rewards, the Prophet ﷺ said up to 700 multiples and Allah adds up over that, on top of that, to whomever he's, he wants. You know how many letters are there in the Qur'an? There are over 325,000 letters in the Qur'an. So by reciting the Qur'an once, if we want to do simple math and just take this narration, Right? At face value. That's three and a quarter million rewards in one time reciting the full Mus'haf. So if we want to add the other recitations of the multiplications of reward in general and multiply that by 700, now I don't know the math of that, I didn't calculate it, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to multiply 325,000 by 700, but it's a lot of, a lot of millions. Right? But the thing that is not mentioned after that is that Allah adds on top of that, increases the reward. And when Allah Azza wa does not say how much is the increment, as the scholar said, it's a sign of, a, of abundance in reward. Nas'alullah min fadlih. Now, if someone tells you, that I heard so-and-so president, so-and-so prince, so-and-so king, so mention your name and say, he is special to me. How would you feel? You'll feel honored. You will feel important. Wow. So-and-so king or president or prince mentioned me by name and said, I am special to him? This is really nice. Well, Allah Azza wa Jal, and to him belongs the best of examples, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You become special to him when you become a regular reciter of the Qur'an. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is in the book of Imam Ahmed. 
He said Allah Azza wa Jal has special people, chosen people, selected, distinct category of people. People asked who? Who are these people? He said, the people of the Qur'an are the special chosen people by Allah. You see now the honor one would feel by being regular in his recitation of the Qur'an and strives hard to memorize the Qur'an. You become on the list of those who are special to Allah Azza wa You'll be chosen. You'll be singled out by virtue of your recitation of the Qur'an. We love our parents, don't we? Don't we all supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal to admit them into Jannah? And protect them and preserve them when they're alive and forgive them after their death? Isn't this something that every Muslim does and wishes and hopes for? Well, you can, if you're sincere about your love to your parents and your care to your parents, then do something about it. That is easy. On the Day of Judgment, and this is reported by Imam Ahmed, classified as sound by Al-Albani. On the Day of Judgment, the Quran will come in the shape of a pale person addresses the person who memorized it and says don't you know me don't you recognize me i am the one who kept you up at night and made you thirsty and hungry during hot days, referring to Qiyam al-Layl and fasting. Why would the Qur'an do that, by the way? When you act upon the Qur'an, this is what happens. You start praying Qiyam and you start fasting, optional fast. And then, after that, that person, the crown of dignity, like the, the previous uh, narration, the crown of dignity will be placed of on his head and then his parents each will be dressed with a garment so precious the Prophet ﷺ said لا يقوم لهما أهل الدنيا. they will be dressed each with a garment that if the entire population of this dunya were to collectively gather and try to assess the value of this precious garment, they would fail as precious as it is. At that, they would say, what entitled us to this? Now, this is not something normal, you know. It's a very precious garment. They will be told, it is by the virtue of your child memorizing the Qur'an. Two people are addressed here. Parents work hard in order to attain this. Children work hard if you truly love your parents in order to entitle them to such reward. Fame. A lot of people are obsessed by fame, being famous, being spoken about in this dunya. Well, you want fame? And it's not just any kind of fame. It's a special type of fame. Then you need to be reciting the Quran. Abu Sa'id al Khudri, and this is reported by Ahmed, classified a sound by Al-Albani was approached by a man once and the man said Awsini advise me he said 
You're asking me about something that I have asked myself to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before. So he has the news. He has the correct answer because it came from the main source. From the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet ﷺ advised him with different things. He mentioned different things, but then he said, Recite the Quran frequently. For it is your comfort, according to one version, and to an, according to another narration, it is your mention, and I will explain, in the heavens, and light for you, or your mention on earth. Your mention in the heavens. The scholar said, it is when the angels start praising that person amongst themselves in the heavens. Now that's one type of fame that doesn't exist in this dunya except for this type of people. <coughs> that's not the type of fame that people run after in this life. And it is your mention on earth the scholar said, it is by virtue of reciting the Qur'an, people start praising that person and his reputation becomes so virtuous that it spreads and he becomes famous, known for being a, rec a frequent reciter of the Qur'an. Ramadan, as we said, is the month of Qur'an, during which the Qur'an was set down. How did our righteous predecessors, our Salaf, how was their conduct? How did they behave with connection to the Qur'an? Was it a normal month for them? Absolutely not. Uh, Al-Aswad ibn Yazid used to recite during Ramadan the Quran and finish it every two nights. So every other day he would start a new one. So he would be reciting simple math, 15 juz every day. Now, if you think this is uh, serious, then listen what Qatada used to do. Qatada used to finish the Qur'an weekly, outside Ramadan, before and after. Every seven days, he would finish the Qur'an once. Right? When Ramadan starts, he would recite it every three days. That's ten juz per day. When the ten nights of Ramadan begin, he would recite it once a day. That's 30 juz a day. I see some faces with the expression of surprise and astonishment. How can this be? First of all, it is doable. Right? It takes one condition. Is that you allocate your time for the Quran. When you do so, it's very doable. It might be difficult for those who don't know how to recite the Quran properly because they're not used to it or because it's not their mother tongue or because they haven't practiced it enough. Yes, it takes longer for them than a person who is frequently reciting the Quran regardless if he's Arab or non-Arab. Does it matter? If he's used to reciting the Qur'an all the time, then reciting the Qur'an is easy for him. Those who 
find it easy to recite the Quran, can finish it 25 every juz, 25 to 30 minutes. If they're good about it, they can finish it in 20 minutes easy. Simple math. If it's the first one, half an hour, two juz per hour. You need 15 hours. Easy. So, this is how serious they took the recitation of the Quran. This is how important and special Ramadan was for them. You know, it does take commitment to sit down and read the Quran throughout the day for 15 or 12 or 16 hours. That's a lot of hours of commitment. But they used to be committed. And that's why they are what they are and we are what we are. That's why that was their level and this is our rank. See, Allah Azza wa said it in the Quran, simple. In that meaning, in virtue, let those who want to compete, compete. Competition is in this. In what? How much I can collect whilst I'm in dunya for the hereafter. And they were very serious and very keen uh, on collecting as much as they could. Now, Ibn Rajab asks, answers a question that probably is in the minds of many of you. Didn't the Prophet ﷺ instruct us not to recite the Qur'an, the entire Qur'an, in less than three days? Well, yes, in normal situations. Ibn Rajab said, the scholars said, people like Malik and others, uh, Ahmed radiallahu anhu wa rahimahullah and, and others, uh, said that this is in normal situations and on continuous basis. But during times and places of virtue, the situation is different. And then he gave examples. He said, like, for example, the time-wise, like Ramadan, and places like in Mecca, for those who don't live in Mecca. Otherwise, it's, it's going to become... The normal thing for them is that they live in Mecca. But those who go visiting Mecca, it's a special thing for them. That doesn't happen frequently. Some people only visit Mecca once in their lives for Hajj, right? Well, it's a special, distinct, sacred place. And therefore, they say, these special, distinct times and places are exempted and excluded from these uh, the prophetic instruction what is the objective of continuously reciting the quran number one by reciting the quran you draw closer to allah it's a means of drawing closer it's a means of nearness to allah azza wa jal being loved by allah azza wa jal becoming a special person with allah azza wa jal number two it's the way to be guided to the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. Inna hadha al-Qur'ana yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. Indeed, this Qur'an guides to that which is best. Guides to that which is best. So you want to, guide, to be guided to the best, to the path of Allah Azza wa Jal? To the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, be a frequent reciter of the Quran. You want to be closer to Allah, recite the Quran. My slave continues to draw nearer to me by virtue of optional acts of worship until I love him. Allah says in the Qudsi narration. Now, how do we obtain this guidance 
that the Quran facilitates. It's when you read the Quran with reflection and attentiveness. When you read the Quran and think about what you're reciting and reading. When you read the Quran and you feel your heart is what's reading and not your eyes. It's when you read the Quran and you feel that you live the Quran and not just flipping its pages. That's truly when you will benefit from the Quran. See, reciting the Quran with reflection while ponder upon, pondering upon its meanings, it makes you humble to Allah. It softens the heart. It makes you fear Allah Azza wa Jal. And it also instills hope in your heart in the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. But that only happens when you recite it, wanting to benefit from it, and therefore you reflect. Some might say, well, I'm an English speaker. I'm a French speaker. I'm a... Okay, fine. Recite the Qur'an and when you do, read the translation of the interpretation of the Qur'an. You only know how to recite it? Well, understand its meaning so when you read it, you understand and your heart will be moved. And trust me, brothers and sisters, no one, no one, it is impossible, no one would sincerely Seek to understand the Qur'an and implore Allah Azza wa Jal and direct his heart and works and takes the means except that Allah Azza wa Jal will facilitate it for him. I know a man personally who started reciting, uh, memorizing the Qur'an at the age of 59, late 59. Memory span becomes very short at that age. In two years, he memorized the full Qur'an. He's a common person. He's not a student of knowledge or anything. Another story, a 73-year-old man in one of the Muslim countries passed by a masjid and heard uh, the sound in the masjid different. So he entered and it's... Uh, a uh, school of memorizing the memorization of the Quran, right? So he looked and saw these young boys reciting the Quran, and memorizing the Quran. So he pitied himself. He felt sorry for himself and became determined to memorize the Quran. And he set a goal. And he started implementing the plan. And in two years, he finished the Qur'an. So he wanted to be grateful to Allah Azza wa and feed people. He wanted to hold a dinner to feed people as a, a means of reflecting gratitude. To show appreciation to Allah. So he does something righteous, feeding people. So the dinner was held. People ate. And the man died at that dinner after having concluded the entire Quran in memorization at that very old age. That's why I say it is impossible that you are sincere and you utilize the means. You plan and work, seriously work, except that Allah will facilitate it, whether it be Memorizing the Qur'an or learning how to recite the Qur'an. Some people might say, well, Brother Hazm, we don't know how to recite, let alone start memorizing. Okay, fine. Make that be your plan. My plan is to know how to recite the Qur'an from the Mus'haf easily. And then plan to, after this is achieved, 
I will work on memorizing. So, we have to be serious in order to achieve. And finally, with all these rewards, with all these motivating religious texts in the Quran and the Sunnah, yet you see many Muslims are very negligent about the Quran, including the month of Ramadan. Well, there is a stern warning. There is a big threat addressing those who are negligent of the Quran. You know who your enemy will be on the day of judgment? It will be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He'll be your opponent rather, not an enemy. He will be your opponent on the day of judgment. Allah says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبْ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا The messenger will say, My Lord, my people have taken this Qur'an a neglected thing. They were negligent about it. They were not serious about it. They did not study it. They did not learn how to recite it. They did not strive to understand it or work hard to memorize it. We need to be careful not to be on the opposite side with the opponent be who's complaining about me and you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's not be negligent of the Quran. And negligence is in learning, memorizing, reciting, listening to it, adhering to its commands, putting it into practice, refraining from its prohibitions, and referring to it and accepting it as judge over all matters. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those. Allahumma ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.